Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tees video. And there were obviously some class changes, and I think the meta has been shifting around a little bit, even without those changes here in season four. So much so that I wanted to get a little bit of an update and my thoughts on the specializations and how they're currently ranking in terms of power. So you're gonna have a good idea of how your specialization should really be expecting to perform right now in the solo shuffle bracket. And if you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with news related to World of Warcraft, then smash the subscribe button. Your support is greatly appreciated. Appreciate it. So let's get started with the Arms Warrior. I think Arms Warrior is really well rounded. Um, you can fit with a lot of different classes and have a lot of different synergies, but you have some hard counters. Uh, mages in particular are very difficult to deal with. I think even D DPS evokers can be a bit of a struggle, as well as hunters. Um, and all three of those are decently popular at the moment in Shuffle. I think this does ultimately hold the specialization back a bit. So for me, I'm going to be putting it onto A tier, but mostly because of its versatility. You can pretty much almost never get a lobby where a comp with a warrior is not going to be good. Uh, maybe like Rogue Warrior and even that you know sometimes can actually work out for you so you do have that going for you it's really well rounded you'll never get those lobbies where you feel like you're getting some wonky composition uh, like a double priest something you know like I've seen a couple times but it does have some counters that's holding it back from some of the upper ranks vengeance demon hunter uh, you know this thing actually just got nerfed really hard so I'm thinking it's probably not going to be performing well but I'm also kind of avoiding ranking the tanks at the moment Havoc Demon Hunter this is the elephant in the room this is what everybody wants to know about I queued some shuffles on both Elemental and on Balanced Druid and I got a Demon Hunter in both of them go figure Demon Hunters are really popular um, the data was slightly skewed for me because I think there was a you know a bit of a difference between the healers but even still the Demon Hunter wasn't out massively out damaging everybody it they were taking a bit more damage but it still took a little bit of dampening but in shuffle dampening moves much faster so you'll notice that a bit more um so i think against casters they're a little bit squishier probably not going to be like a hyper focus target still for casters even despite their reduction um, in durability but they're definitely more of a swappable target later into the game I think crowd controlling them is still the best way to play around them. And the damage output is actually, I would say, noticeably down, uh, especially outside of their cooldowns. You still need to fully respect the metamorphosis and the essence break. It seems like their burst is still high, um, but their overall meter damage has come down a lot since then, which is going to give a lot of breathing room for other healers. I'm going to put them onto S tier for right now. Um, I do think that they have some weaknesses into rogues and windwalkers, burst classes. And if you CC them properly, the that they can be kind of neutralized effectively with that type of strategy. Um, but in Shuffle, it's hard to chain CC, especially coordinated with no voice and stuff like that. So usually Demon Hunters get to run rampant um, to the strategy that would typically keep them in place. And obviously they were really powerful, but I still think they're pretty powerful even despite the changes. Although I did have them up on God tier uh, prior to this point. Shadow Priest is remarkably good, but really hard to play. Uh, this one will reward you for investment. If you want to get good at this thing, you're absolutely going to be able to tear it up. It does a lot of damage at the moment. It has really good survivability. You're highly durable. Main problem is working around interrupts and how to maintain your dots and get that damage out without being totally shut down by interrupts. But you do have some counters. I think Windwalkers and Warriors can be really difficult. Uh, in particular, but outside of those situations, you're one of the best spellcasters in the game. So for me, I think it's it's kind of like Arms Warrior. I'm going to be putting it up onto the A tier. I think it's really well-rounded, really solid in defense, but it's a bit harder to play, which is holding its ranking down a little bit, um, as well as it has some counter specs, which make it really tough to, to perform. Disc Priest is doing really well in Shuffle. I think the, the amount of damage you can get out right now, a damage build is super fun and actually performing really well. Um, I've still been playing the Shield build recently and I've been playing at like 2650 in the top in the, some of the top spots on Disc. I really like it. Disc has been really fun for me, um, but it does have counters. I think things like Affliction Warlock, which is gaining popularity, although not, not as notably in Solo Shuffle, can be really tough. Just dot classes in general can be really difficult um but i think it's still probably i would say at least a solid a um given the fact that it's got some counters a bit harder to play can fall behind but if you really want that damage stealing play style with like that hybrid healing no other specialization is going to deliver to you like disc priest and it's always been one of the most fun for me personally holy priest is still really good um, even despite some of the damage nerfs coming in, the output, the cooldown rotations with going into angel form and apotheosis and chaining these together for free healing is allowing them to extend their mana a lot longer than other healers. Um, and even despite the damage change, it seems like they're still getting at least some decent numbers out. I'd say that the damage um, fluctuation between the healers with this most recent change is going to be more felt in 2v2 uh, than it is in solo shuffle um, because you can still participate during kill windows and your overall is not as important as it is in something like 2v2. I think D Holy Priest is probably 
Am I really about to put this on S? I think that it is. I think that it's really well-rounded. Having a ranged stun opens up a bunch of kill windows for a lot of specs that might not otherwise have it. I'm going to put it on S tier. I actually think Holy Priest is doing really well at the moment uh, in Solo Shuffle. Brewmaster, not really ranking the tanks. I haven't seen them a lot, honestly. Windwalker is really good at the moment. It does a lot of damage. It's really tanky. And if you play around your portal um, when you're, you've are you got windows where you don't have cooldowns, you're going to feel like borderline unkillable in a lot of those situations. And you just pump numbers. Just insane, disgusting amounts of damage. Uh, you do have similar counters to Warrior um, with Mage and Hunter um, and even DPS Evoker and Rep Paladin, I would say, maybe a little bit more. So for me, Windwalker, I want to say is better than Arms Warrior, but I don't know if it's like a whole tier better. So we'll probably put it on the same tier, but if it's on the left, I think it's better, basically, than the other melee of that tier. Mistweaver Monk, I don't think this one is jamming so hard anymore. I think the, you know, the nurse a while back to it brought it down a bit. I think the cast in Mistweaver is also very weak at the moment. It's just basically no damage output, no offense from that side. And Fistweaver can just get heavily countered. So for me... <sighs> Where do we want to put this? Because sometimes Fist Weaver can absolutely just destroy a lobby. That's what I'm saying. It's like a coin flip spec where like you're just you could just absolutely close it out and there's nothing anyone can do with a bunch of dot classes in the game basically against any other healer. But you can get other situations where you just CC the entire game, not able to move, and you're just it's a coin flip class, and I think for that reason it's not well rounded, and that's gonna hold its ranking down here in Solo Shuffle. Boomkin got its survivability hit a little bit. I didn't really notice it. I think more so druids that don't know how to use cyclone are going to feel that nerf druids that like panic and they go into bear form a lot uh are probably going to feel noticeably weaker but for me personally i didn't feel that bad um defensively um in my most recent lobby and i had a warrior and a shadow priest and shadow priest is typically kind of hard as boomkin um and same with warrior if the, that type of composition is on you it can be tough to survive and i was still having a decent time i still think it's really good um, and I know you guys are going to be like, oh, we got this Boomkin bias. Again, if you're a new person to the specialization, almost any specialization, it's going to be a, a tough ride. But Boomkin is definitely one of them, you know, higher up ones where if you're new to it, you're really going to struggle. But I actually still think it's God tier. Um, I think it's probably one of the best solo shuffle specs in the game. Uh, most notably because the things that are hard for it aren't popular. Um, so things like Affliction Warlock can actually be really hard as a balanced druid because they're basically not a target and they're hard to CC. They have a lot of interrupts and disruption to stop you from casting and you rot really hard to their damage. But Affliction is just not popular and it's not like notably strong and shuffle that everybody is re-rolling to it at least. Um, much like we've seen people re-roll to like Rhett or Demon Hunter when they're strong. Um, so mostly the specs that make it tough for you to win aren't popular assassination rogue although it's more popular now rogue specs in general have low population uh you know what do you want to call them thresholds over other classes there's just not a lot of rogues in general uh, and there's not a lot of affliction warlocks so these types of specs we saw in the tournament as like a counter pick as well to boomkins unholy death knight is a little bit more i would say demon hunters and death knights can be tough and those are more popular but they're you know more more, more manageable than affliction or a good assassination rogue in those types of situations but low low counter population is one of the main reasons i think boomkins still god tier it's really flexible can play basically any of the comps in the game and it's cyclone is still a really good synergistic ability to be able to carry rounds and your survivability is still high enough that i wasn't just dying immediately feral druid i don't think is very good uh feral druid i'm going to put on to b tier i think survivability for feral is a big issue you can abuse cyclone a lot but it's a lot harder to coordinate with your teammates because it's much more of like a hit and run play style where you're getting these clones and you got to know your moments to run away and if you can't be synergized with your team in those types of situations it's tough to do well and just in general it's really squishy relative to a lot of other specializations it's probably you're probably always going to be the target on it i think it's going to be tough to really do a lot with it um and unlike Boomkin, you know, you don't get the the Alkin frenzies. Although you can Heart of the Wild and get some pretty fast clones. I will give it that. If you're if you're running Heart of the Wild, you can still get a lot of CC up, but I, I think you're still gonna struggle with it. I think it's it's just not it's not as strong. Fury Warrior, you know, I, I've been playing it um recently. I wanted to try out some of the buffs and see if we can make it work. I think it's okay, but it's not like spectacular. I don't think it's better than arms. Uh, I'm gonna put it down here onto B tier. I think that it's a pretty straightforward melee, super simple to play, has the same counters as arms, but not really any of the main benefits. Like if you're not getting good uptime, it's hard to get momentum with it. The MS not stacking properly because other classes have MS that supersede yours before you can stack it up is a really frustrating mechanic. I think I've said that in every video I've ever talked about Fury Warrior. If they can make it so the Fury Warrior MS always is present when it's on the target, even if it's at its low stacks over other MSs. 
uh, or make it present and then take over when it passes it, it would help. It would go a long way in making it more viable because um, you get comps like Windwalker Fury or Demon Hunter Fury, and then you have to spec out of your MS because it's just not going to stack um, in time to really gain any sort of momentum. It seems like it's really good into very specific things like Shadow Priests and Warlocks, but then it gets just you're not able to get anything done outside of that. So I think Fury Warrior is still kind of mid. Uh, Guardian Druid, not really ranking the tank specs here. Resto Druid, I think is absolute god tier now. Um, you had really solid healing output before, and now you do a ton of damage. It does a whole lot of damage now with the damage buffs. I think the biggest change, biggest upset is Resto Druid is is coming up here to the top. It's it's doing a lot of damage. Rep Paladin, this might come as a surprise, but I'm actually putting this on S tier. I think that Rep Paladin is remarkably good in Shuffle. I think it's one of the few melee DPS that can actually win ranged lobbies because you are mostly ranged yourself. It's not like it used to be uh, for Rep Paladin. I've seen lots of cases where you, you survive the deep dampening, bubble run in, and you can just take somebody out while you're immune to all damage. It's really well-rounded, absolute slugger, dodges a lot of the nerfs coming through. It's it's a really good specialization. Don't let, don't let anybody... Let you sell you on this being like underrated or weak or something like that prop paladin again tough to rank the tanks i almost never see that i've never seen a prop paladin i think in like the last year to be honest uh holy paladin i think you're still going to really struggle with demon hunters and rets i think they're still going to run you down and those lobbies are going to be rough and ret is still really popular i think that's the main problem with holy paladin is that ret is just really popular and you just are not good with the ret paladin and the ret paladins own you so you don't get to win when you're playing with them and then you get smashed by them which is a really big problem for the spec specifically the damage buffs are nice the healing output is nice. Those buffs are nice. But as long as there's a real sizable population of rep paladins, you're really not going to get a lot going for you. So for me, I'm putting Holy Paladin on the B tier, even despite all the buffs. I think it's still going to probably feel mid uh, in regards to that because of these specs specifically being like direct counters to how you are built at the moment. And they're so popular. You're just going to always see them. Elemental Shaman, I've been playing this a lot. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be biased with this, but some lobbies can be really rough. Things like Demon Hunters and Rets constantly dispelling your dots, Priest Healers dispelling your dots. The mana cost of the dispel for Priest seems to not matter too much. I, I get, on my other Shaman, everybody's still just spam dispelling my Flame Shocks. I was really hoping that they'd remove Cleanse and Flame from Demon Hunter PvP talents and they'd remove the uh, Judgments of the Pure, I think it is, for Rep Paladins where they judge and they dispel because it's just, it's absolutely irritating beyond belief. Just having your dots constantly removed. They're popping volcanoes that they don't care about knocking them into the air and it's, the dispel protection is doing nothing. Those, those can be really tilting and those happen a lot. Those happen a lot. You have to be very coordinated with when you're setting up your burst and landing CC on the healer in order to try and get around that, which can be hard. I think I just got to almost 2,600 on my Ellie, um, even despite that, but it is rough. But at the same time, the rotation for Ellie is pretty simple and basic. I think out of all the casters, it's probably the most beginner-friendly caster to log into uh, because it's almost all instant cast with Flame Shocks and Lava Burst. So I think because of its ease in that sense, in terms of being able to climb, it's going to get a little bit of a higher ranking. I don't think it's B. Put it up into A here with the with the Shadow Priest. I think it's still a decent pick overall, but there are a lot of difficult things to deal with currently in the meta as it that you'll have to find a way to deal with. Uh, Enhancement Shaman. You know, they got a little bit of buffs to their Frost Shocks, which I think is going to help its burst, but it's still just really going to struggle with mobility. Um, and given that healing is supposed to be its strength, although I wouldn't say healing is like particularly still even that great with it, even despite the buffs, um, not being able to get to your target uh, is going to be one of the main issues. You're even more limited on mobility than Warrior, so this, those matchups become even more annoying. Um, it's, it's really just all about not being able to maintain uptime. I think Enhanced for me, I think I'm probably going to put onto like B tier. Maybe it's like the, you know, in with Feral Dude better than a Fury Warrior. Just kind of mid, middle of the pack for me. Um, you can make it work, obviously. There are people who play Enhanced with Shaman and they make like 30 of the same Shaman and they're still doing really well with it. But I think overall, it's, you know, it's going to be harder to succeed with it. Resto Shaman's still really good. It is absolutely the top dog in terms of spell casters with double ranged. You win almost every lobby with four casters in it as a Resto Shaman. It's really good in those environments. Only time you really struggle is with four melee DPS and a Resto Druid on the other side. That can be really tough which you might see more often now, um, given Melody DPS are generally more popular than ranged, and Resto Druid is just absolutely crazy. Uh, where do we want to put Resto Shaman? I think it's probably like S tier. I think you can bully Disc Priest a lot. I think you're pretty close to where Holy Priest is, though. Um, I, I feel pretty safe putting it up onto S tier in terms of its overall throughput. Really good on mana, probably the best healer on mana. I think you can compete. Um, yeah, I think S tier is a suitable location right now for Resto Shaman. Prot Warrior... Again, not really talking about the tanks. Don't don't ever see them. Devastation Evoker, really good caster. I'm putting this under the S tier. 
it just does a remarkable amount of damage whether it's burst or pressure it does an insane amount of damage at the moment i'd say it's even more straightforward than le just spamming disintegrate and flying around in circles really simple melee range that you want to pick up and start having success on the ladder from low to high end devastation evoker is going to be your go-to it's absolutely goaded at the moment you may struggle in like four spellcaster lobbies because you're only 20 yard range i have seen that maybe be one of the main setbacks for it um but running the hover immunity to snares helps you out with the melee dps running it obsidian skills or mastery helps you out with all the interrupts that you might have to deal with otherwise it's really good it just does it. its numbers are really high preservation evoker may be the hardest healer to rank for shuffle because it can be really difficult with the limited range but its output is so remarkably high that like I, I don't feel comfortable giving it like a super low rating um i want to say it's like s at least in shuffle I don't think it's as versatile as Druid in Shovel, especially with how good I think Druid is now since the damage buffs, but it's pretty close. Probably in here with Shaman and Holy Priest. These guys are all really close to each other um, in terms of overall throughput. Um, but I, yeah, it's it's overall, the amount of healing it can do is absolutely remarkable at the moment. It's got really high HPS. It's like almost impossible to die unless they're CC'd. Uh, augmentation evoker I almost never see. I, every once in a while it pops up, but it just seems like a weaker version of Devastation to me. So for me, I think it's probably like more a bit mid, mid tier here. Put it onto the B tier. Uh, it's just it seems like a just a, a weaker version of devastation is what it feels like at the moment. Beast Mastery Hunters are a really tough one because I, I I see some that absolutely dominate everybody, and I see other ones that can't even win around. It just feels like they're not even doing any damage. Now maybe that's because of where we're at in the season. Some players don't have any gear, and maybe I should have inspected all of them to make sure the gear was the same between them. Um, I think it is really solid though. Call of the Wild does a lot of damage calling in all the pets together, stampeding down your opponent, your damage being all instant cast in range makes it really easy to apply on the go. Um, very streamlined spec to play. Um, I think for me, it's probably A tier in here with Ellie Shaman at least. I think it's still really good. Marksmanship Hunter, despite the sniper shot nerfs, a lot of the MM Hunters are still just not even playing sniper shot. I think this is a really good spec. It is insanely good in terms of offense. Really simple, straightforward to play. I'm slotting this up on the S tier for solo shuffle. I think if you focus on a defensive play style where you're diamond ice trapping DPS and just focus on pumping out numbers of aim shots and arcane shots, that you just absolutely mow down so many people with just pressure uh, in a lot of cases. I, th I think it's really good. Uh, survival hunter i think i saw one since the buffs it feels good feels solid it's not as straightforward as bm or marksman though um but it's got really good damage so i'm i'm lobbing this one up here into the a tier it's probably the best of the a tier honestly maybe 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 windwalker and it's pretty close between windwalker and survival but i think survival is actually better than arms um it's it's better into the classes that arms is weaker into and it's more well-rounded i think it's overall damage is actually probably slightly higher uh it's got more consistent instant cc as, as well which i think makes it a bit better but it's a bit squishier i think so it's fair to to bring it down a little bit here uh affliction warlock really good really strong spec super underrated honestly uh where do we want to put this i think it's probably a tier at the moment maybe hmm, this is a tough one it's a really tough one because you do have to cast all of, almost all of your meaningful damage is going to come from casting you've got burst builds it's probably a tier i'm going to say for right now and shuffle i think it's still kind of hard with only one school of magic is the main gripe that i have for the specialization um i think a tier is a comfortable spot for it though demonology warlock really solid spec has tremendous pressure and shuffle because dampening is higher a lot of people don't know how to run away from tyrant as well because they're not as coordinated it's really good. It has every CCDR. Super underrated. Really powerful range spec. I'm going to put this on the S tier. I think it's probably the best lock spec. It's really good. It has a ton of control. Destruction Warlock. You know, you're still kind of wreathing from losing your set bonus for the, you know, the resetting procs on your rifts, but you still got really good overall throughput. I'd say the kit falls a bit weaker than Demonology just in terms of its overall CC. Um, so for me, I think it's probably coming down here onto like A tier with, with Affliction. A little bit lower. Arcane Mage, I, the Mage specs are tough for me in terms of like, you know, where I want to put these. Um, Arcane can be really annoying. You can get Elemental Shaman lobbies, multiple Shaman lobbies in general are really annoying, and those are pretty popular. But if you get like Rep Paladin lobbies and all melee, you can absolutely run away with those as Arcane. So it's a bit of a coin flip spec. Where do we want to put this? The mages might actually be the hardest specs to rank overall because I'm kind of wanting to put it on B tier, but then I'm thinking like, there's no way it's B tier. But then it's like, we have so many on A. Is it really A? Like it has so many shutdowns, so many counters. It's coin flip, similar to how I put Mistweaver here. So maybe we'll put Arcane on B 
um, for the time being. I think that's probably a fair spot. Fire can be good if you're left alone and can sit in the back and cast, but similar to Arcane, you get run down by Hunters, you get run down by Ellie's. It can be really tough to, to do a lot with this, but it's easier than Arcane because it's almost all instant cast damage. So I think because of that, I'm going to actually put Fire Mage up here with Affliction, um, somewhere here with Affliction. Uh, I think Fire is actually a bit better than Arcane. It's also easier to play overall. Frost might be the best specialization of them all. Uh, but if you get wizard lobbies, it can be really tough to kind of overcome that. So this is this is such a hard one. This is such a hard one. It's got to be better than Arcane because you got multiple schools of magic for me personally. Is it better than Fire? It's definitely close. I feel like we're going to have to move stuff around. Maybe Destro should move down into B tier or something, but I don't think it's that weak. This is a really tough tier list. Actually, honestly, towards the end of this season, the balance is getting really close. Like The, the fact that this is this hard for me is a really good thing for the game. Um, for, and I might even be wrong, honestly, about this with where I'm putting this because this, this is major ones are really tough. I think major overall is not in the strongest spot, especially when it comes to shuffle, but it's not awful either. Frost Death Knight, on the other hand, though, I'm sorry, guys. I'm doing it to you. Putting you on the D tier. It's just, you just, you need specific compositions and strategies to work. And if you don't get those matchups in shuffle and also coordinating them in shuffle is probably not going to happen. You just can't get a lot done. I'm really hoping the rework and the war within focusing on the, bring up your sustained damage puts you in a more flexible and versatile position than this kind of like niche play style that you've got to do that just doesn't work in shuffle um, moving forward. Unholy Death Knight, though, really good. This is a really strong spec at the moment. Where do we want to put this? I'm going to put this in S or A. It's probably the best of the A. I think that Unholy DK is really strong at the moment. It can absolutely mow down Boomkins. It can win, have win conditions, though. It has good synergy with Demon Hunters. Um, good synergy with a lot of different specs. Good overall damage. It's t a lot tankier than it was before. I think it's definitely a solid position for A. Blood DK, don't see it tough to rank outlaw rogue honestly don't see a lot of this one either anymore rogue and mage are probably the hardest specs to rank um where do we want to put outlaw rogue i still think it's really durable hands of the best player you're going to be able to get a lot done with it but in the hands of beginner you're going to feel pretty useless so take that into account so i think it's important to you know listen to the commentary when i'm putting these in um because yeah there's, there's got to be some context added to it as well i i feel dumb putting it lower than a because i think it's still really tanky it has a lot of control and decent high output of damage so it's probably definitely somewhere up in your in the a tier um subtlety rogue you know even despite the buffs they were targeting a lot of abilities that aren't really impactful unless we see some sort of build come up that's focused around rupture that just suddenly absolutely breaks the meta i just don't see it happening i think subtlety rogue is still going to be a bit of a struggle bus you know when the stars align you can get that big one hit wonder um it works out for you and that that can happen more often than not in shuffle because again people aren't in voice comms but i think it's not that fantastic even with even with the buffs that it's got i don't think it's that great assassination rogue on the other hand i think is really good i think this is probably the best rogue spec actually at the moment you have execute power um king's bane burst uh, you're squishier than Outlaw is like the trade-off. You get a lot more lethality and overall damage, I think, than Outlaw, but you trade that off to be more squishy, which makes sense thematically as well to me. I'm going to say it's better than Outlaw, maybe better than Windwalker. It's it's really tough. Again, rogue, rogue specializations are really tough to rank. They're really low population in general. You don't get a lot of data points with them. Um, and they re there's a little bit more to them than something like the Red Paladins or the Demon Hunters in terms of getting to work, which makes them harder for a beginner player to start having a lot of success with, which can be make it difficult to rank them but i feel pretty safe with this uh at the moment in terms of the list how i'm feeling with specializations how i'm experiencing them i've been playing from multiple roles and different perspectives to try and give the most balanced look at what i'm considering for this current patch and i think that this is pretty close um to how it how it's laid out at the moment in solo shuffle so thank you very much for watching the video i hope that you guys enjoyed this discussion and i will see you in the next one